Welcome to the virtual Christmas Eve worship service of our ELCA congregations here in the Missoula area. We felt it was really important, especially in this time of wanting to gather together, but not being able to do that in a traditional way, that we would come together as the Lutheran churches in this community and share this Christmas Eve worship service together with you. May God bless this journey of worship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now listen to our Christmas Eve scripture readings. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who shines in glory, clothes us in compassion, and bears gifts of mercy for all. Let us confess our sins with confidence in God's promises of forgiveness. We'll have silence for self-reflection. God, our wonderful counselor, we confess that we have turned from your gifts and chosen our own way. We have not made room for you in our hearts or in our world. We have lived in fear. We have not welcomed the stranger. We desire gifts that will not endure. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, and open us to receive the peace of Jesus dwelling in and among us. Amen. God's loving kindness has appeared to us in Christ our Savior. We are saved not by anything that we have done, but by God's mercy poured out upon us richly. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Through the Spirit living in you, God give you faith to trust Jesus, who is love born for you now and always. Amen. Amen.
first reading comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Titus, the second chapter. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus 
that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, you made this hallowed night filled with the glory of the true light. Grant that the same light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And finally, receive this. Go in peace, rejoice, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Hi friends, welcome back to Kids Time. It's so fun to be together tonight on this special, special night of Christmas Eve. Did you notice something has already changed in the background of this video? Maybe you guessed it. Look, the Christmas tree changed colors. It was blue for four weeks and now it changed to white, a color of celebration. And so I'm really excited to read the Christmas story with you and we'll talk a little bit about light. But before we do, I'm wondering, what words come to your mind when I say, Merry Christmas? Maybe you feel happy or excited or you want to bounce up and down because it's just so awesome. So, I'm going to say Merry Christmas, and I want to see your most excited Christmas Eve face. Ready? Merry Christmas! I hope that you are just as excited as I am for this really special, special night together. And so, we're going to read from our storybook Bible. We've taken a break from it the past few weeks on Sunday mornings, but tonight... We're going to read that special story about Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. If you have a Spark Bible, I would invite you to pause this video and go and grab it so that you can follow along in our Christmas story. And if you're following along, you can open to the story called Jesus is Born. 
and it's on page 212. So let's read it together. We have to go to Bethlehem, Joseph told Mary. Emperor Augustus has ordered that all of the people need to be counted. But Joseph, Mary said, what about our baby? He will be born soon. We'll go slowly, Mary. Bethlehem will be crowded, so we need to leave now. So Mary and Joseph journeyed to Bethlehem, the city of David, to be counted along with all of the other people. It was cold when they arrived. Joseph knocked on many doors looking for a room, but everyone said no. Finally, an innkeeper answered his door. I have no room, the innkeeper said, but you can stay in the little stable in the back. It's warm and the hay is fresh. Joseph, Mary said, I think it's time for the baby to be born. That night, Mary gave birth to Jesus. She laid him in a manger. The animals kept them warm as they waited for morning. Outside of Bethlehem, shepherds watched their sheep on the hills. Suddenly, an angel appeared. The shepherds looked up at the bright night sky. Don't be afraid, the angel said. I bring wonderful news. The child God promised was born tonight. The shepherds listened in amazement. The twinkling stars seemed to echo each of the angel's words. The angel continued, Go to Bethlehem. You will find the child lying in a bed of hay. Suddenly, many angels filled the heavens. They sang together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to all people on earth. Let's hurry, one of the shepherds said. The angel said that the child was born tonight. But what about the sheep? Another shepherd asked. Let the angels watch them, the youngest shepherd said. Yes, let the angels watch them. The shepherds happily hurried into Bethlehem. The angel was right. The shepherds found the baby Jesus asleep on a bed of hay. They told Mary and Joseph all the angel had said. The angel said the baby is the Messiah, the promised one. He is the one we have been waiting for, they explained. But this is a stable. Why would God be born here, among the animals? Moo, said the cow. Bah, said the sheep. Coo, coo, said the dove. Mary smiled. She knew that Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. Later, the shepherds returned to their sheep, praising God for all they had seen and heard. Jesus was born. Well, since we've been up here for the last few weeks, I thought we would come up next to the Advent wreath and the Christmas tree to really feel like it is Christmas Eve tonight. Now, I'm wondering, what are some things that you think of when you think about Christmas? Can you name two? Maybe turn to someone who's sitting near you, your parents or your family, and share with them two things that make you think of Christmas. Maybe you said presents, or candy canes, or Christmas trees, or baby Jesus. And all of those things definitely remind us of Christmas. But there's one really special thing that reminds me of Christmas. Light. I don't know if you noticed, but remember our Christmas tree turned from blue to bright white. And 
Now all of our Advent candles are lit and we get to light the middle one, the Christ candle. So will you help me bring some more light by lighting our middle candle? Now our Advent wreath, our wreath of light, is complete. And to make it even more special, let's turn off the lights. You know, there's something really special about turning all the lights off and just having the light of our Christmas tree and our Advent wreath, the light of our candles, you really notice how bright those lights are. And so, you know how sometimes on Christmas Eve, we all have our candles and we light them together as we sing Silent Night? Well, this year, because you're at home with your family, you could make it even more special by lighting a candle together and singing Silent Night, or just enjoying the beautiful light that shines in the darkness. So, I would invite you to ask a parent or a family member or grown-up to help you light a candle. Because another thing that light does, it doesn't just help us see, but it reminds us of that Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus' light shines in you and through you. So even though we can't see that light like a candle, we know that it shines bright in each one of us. So tonight, as you light your candles and celebrate this special, special night of Christmas Eve, remember this birth of Jesus is the light in a dark room. And we can see that in the lights all around us and inside of us. So Merry Christmas, friends. I hope that tomorrow is wonderful for you and you enjoy this special night with your family. Bye, everybody. Merry Christmas.
Tonight, we have the story of the angel coming and saying, Do not be afraid. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. That might sound pretty good right now. It's definitely been a hard year, filled with anxiety around the coronavirus and jobs and security, our future, and contentious in politics and even hatred and racial strife, so much conflict and violence. We even have militia terrorizing churches and people are scared. Our divides are so deep, we can't listen or connect or understand. People are worn out. We've had death and grief, isolation, disconnection. Many of us are weary and fatigued. Yes, we have a new governor, we have a new president. Yes, there will be a vaccine. But today, we hear a different story. We're invited into, into this deeper story of transformation of the heart and the mind and the whole body and soul. So I invite us into this story. And the story starts, of course, with Mary here, who has the angel that comes to her and says, you will conceive this child who will be son of the Most High. It's a bold and daring plan. And Mary goes for it and says, let it be according to your will, which probably sounds great in the moment. But then, you know, when it comes out that Mary is pregnant and she's already engaged to Joseph, and this would have been a big scandal, we could imagine. And, and the family might have felt like it would have brought shame on Mary, but on the whole family. Now, Elizabeth has mentioned her relative who was also pregnant with John the Baptist. And Mary, it says, takes off, runs away. I looked at the map. That's at least 30 miles, maybe 50 miles that she ran. Probably not safe during the day, maybe not legal. So by night, by hiding... Now, Elizabeth is the wife of a priest, and this is a linchpin of this story. Now, Zechariah didn't believe that Elizabeth could get pregnant from the, the angel when the angel came to him, and he was mum. And so when Mary comes and she's in trouble, it's Elizabeth who gets to say. And the child leaps in Elizabeth's womb, and she invites Mary in. She takes this risk and flips the script from shame to blessing and blesses Mary and blesses that child in her womb and says, this is going to be a special baby. And Mary sings that Magnificat saying this, that God has scattered the proud, has lifted up the lowly, has filled the hungry with good things. This story reminds me of all the strong women who take risks and speak truth. And we remember the many kids, teenagers, who, who find themselves running away, perhaps because they're pregnant or because of their sexuality or their gender identity or something else, but it's not safe to be home and they are on the run. And I want to lift up men and women who who break through those cycles of shame to welcome, to love, to bless, to give dignity and worth, especially to those kids. Well, in this story, we also have Joseph here, who was engaged to Mary, and, and when the news broke of her being pregnant, I'm sure his whole family probably thought, well, now that's it, it's all off. The story goes he was a righteous man and, and had chose to dismiss her quietly, I guess, instead of public disgrace or even death. But the angel also comes to Joseph 
and says, this is a child of the Holy Spirit. Take Mary as your wife. And so he does, and he adopts Jesus as his own. Joseph, too, takes that risk. And we think about this this manger scene here, where all of our nativity scenes are usually held. And and I think they went to Bethlehem, and that's where, where, where Joseph is from. He would have had many relatives there, homes that would have taken him in, even by obligation. Maybe they knew the scandal of the situation. Maybe it was safer to be on the sidelines instead of in a prominent home. I'm reminded of all the parents who open their hearts up and adopt children. Of all the the ways that families are blended and mixed. And how important it is, perhaps the loving, the, the most important thing is that we love all of our children, no matter what. Well, in this story, we also have the shepherd here. The shepherds were out in the fields watching the sheep when the angel comes and says, in the city of David is born this night a savior, the Messiah. When we think about how big of a deal that is, remember the city of David, David the king, when things were good, when they had autonomy and freedom, but they don't have freedom any longer. They don't have autonomy. Now they are occupied by the Roman Empire, by soldiers in their land. The Romans are there to build wealth and power by taking all they can, the logging, the mining, everything from the farming, the livestock, huge taxes, hard labor. And they keep power by dehumanizing and belittling the people of that land and threatening with acts of violence that could come at any time. We could imagine how demoralizing and difficult the anxiety that they are living with every day, the fear, the depression, living at a point of almost or absolutely being broken. It's hard to understand for many of us what that would be like. But I have been reading and listening to stories of first First Nation peoples in this land. As they encountered first traders and then and then early settlers, but then but then soldiers with with battles and 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 then massacres and diseases and more settlers that took over the land and occupied the land and the land that they had been on for for hundreds of years and generations and cared for, now was occupied by this foreign people with foreign language and customs and practices, and to have their own languages and customs and practices outlawed and banned and to be shuttled into into camps and to have kids taken away and sent to schools to be westernized and Christianized Think of our Bitterroot Salish and Blackfeet and Pondere and Kalispell and, and other First Mason tribes that were in this area. And how fa- painful and difficult. It's been many trails and many tears for many generations. And they're still here. They're strong and they are resilient. And they too want healing. And it's time for those of us who are settlers for, for deep listening, humility, relationship building, and repentance. It's important for us to remember that Jesus was born into an occupied tribe when many felt abandoned or punished by God, when there was desperateness 
and many were calling for violent revolution. Well, we also have here the wise men who came from the east following the star to bring homage to a new king. On the way, they stopped and talked to King Herod, and Herod got threatened. They left out the back way. And when you're under occupation, you're always subject to whimsical tyranny. And Herod was threatened and ordered the massacre of every infant and toddler in that whole region. It's horrible. Soon in the story, Joseph will have another dream and they will flee by night as a family, now a refugee family, to Egypt. And maybe I was thinking to go to Egypt as a Jewish family. How much the weight of 430 years of slavery or the plagues that eventually got them out. We remember this night, the thousands of families who have fled violence and tyranny in their own lands and homes, looking for a place to be safe, to call home. Even now on our own border, perhaps some in detention. We remember that these are sisters and brothers looking for help. Well, those shepherds brought along with them also the sheep. We have the, the donkey. Perhaps they represent the land and all the creatures who are always at risk of exploitation. And we reminded that all of creation is part of God's salvation, part of God's healing plan. Perhaps on this night, we hear the cries that come from all the corners of the earth to remember our interdependence with all of life and our responsibility to heal and to restore the land. Well, finally, we get to this baby Jesus. The one that comes into this family and who grows up with all of these stories, the emotions, the humility, the vulnerability, the violence lurking around every corner. And the miracle, the miracle of our story tonight is that the God of all creation, the hundreds and billions of galaxies throughout our whole universe, and even the hundreds and millions of stars within our own galaxy. That God loves our own little planet so much that God chose to come into our world in this family, in the flesh and bones and blood of this baby Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us not for revenge or to punish, but as a presence of deep compassion for, for all life and for all people. This is the one God with us who comes with a vision of healing for our whole world, who cuts through those cycles of shame, who cuts through the violence to show a different way and who cuts through those hard divisions between us and them where we feel stuck and shows us the power of compassion, of hospitality, of, of listening, of forgiveness, the power of feeding all people and treating them with dignity and respect, and even that power of crossing over to the other side where the Romans are, the enemy, and learning how to love them, to make peace, to bring healing. 
And he invites us into that vision of healing and to that story of humility and service and sharing and self-giving love and risk-taking for the sake of others. And we know that this Emmanuel story is not over, that this Jesus promises to be with us. It is the living Christ now that is with you, your flesh, your bones, your blood, that no matter how lost or broken or lonely or hurt or angry or despair, you may feel, or any of us may feel, Emmanuel is in you, God with you, bringing love and compassion, healing, and even hope. We have one more here. The angel, this one, the messenger of God, has been very busy in this story. The one who comes to Mary and Joseph, Elizabeth, Zachariah, the shepherds, the wise men. It's this angel who has really orchestrated the whole thing. The one that comes as a surprise in the night, in our dreams or our unconscious, perhaps through the stranger or the friend, the raven in the wood, Beware the angel, the one that comes to stir up trouble. But it's a good trouble. It's an awakening, a vision, with a plan, with action, with risk, with, with a story. Service, justice. It's this angel that comes to you that will come to you and say, child of God, we need you. You're next. It's time to step up, to be part of the next plan, to be part of Emmanuel, God with us, the next story of healing and loving and compassion in the world. God is with us, bringing new life again and again into our broken world. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas.
I now invite you to assume a prayer posture that is most comfortable for you. Uh, during this prayer, I will read each petition, and at the close of each petition, I will say, in the name of the Christ child, in which I invite you to join me in saying, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. For the church, that its people may be encouraged by the good news of Christ's birth and strengthened to reflect your light of hope in the midst of darkness. In the name of the Christ child, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the good gifts of family and friends, food and shelter, for our loved ones at home or away or traveling, that they may be filled with joy. In the name of the Christ child, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world, that wars may end and that they may walk in the light of peace-seeking reconciliation, dignity, and justice for all people. In the name of the Christ child, hear our prayer. For refugees, those who are homeless and those who lack basic necessities, that they may receive an abundance of good gifts. In the name of the Christ child, hear our prayer. For the newborn, the elderly, the sick, the mentally ill, and all who depend on the help of others, that they may find places of hope, nurture, and comfort, especially those whom we name aloud or silently at this time. In the name of the Christ child, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for those who have departed this life and in rest to eternal peace and keeping especially those whom we now name aloud or silently, Grant us comfort until we join them in your eternal embrace. In the name of the Christ child, hear our prayer. Trusting in your mercy, O God, we commend to you all for whom we pray. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your beauty shines forth from the manger and your love flows from the cross. As you gather us around these signs of your love, come among us, warm us to the extent your care among the hungry and all in need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith, to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thank 
pray. God of wonder, in Jesus we behold the light of the world come near. As you have come among us now, send us out in joy, hastening to share the good news of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through the Spirit dwelling among us, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this hallowed night resplendent with the glory of the true light. Grant that same light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may God, the creator who delights in you, Jesus, the savior who is born for you, and the life-giving spirit who shines upon you, bless you and keep you in hope and peace now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Rejoice. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>